electronic identification has the potential to revolutionise your cattle system. The Farm Advisory Service, in partnership with Scott EID, have put together this series of videos. We follow several farmers involved in the EID pilot scheme and also showcase some good examples of EID in practice. Andrew has been using Scott EID since the spring of the year of 2020. He calved 60 calves and put pink UHF tag in it as every animal's secondary tag. He's now moving to put management tags in the rest of his cattle. So we're on a cool farm here on the west side of Isla. We've got about 1,500 acres just over of, of land on the farm. We've got about 65 cows to the bull this year. Just short of 800 yows to the tup and we're growing about 80 acres of cereal as well. So Andrew, you've moved into EID tagging your cattle. Can yes. you give us a wee explanation as to why you've done that? We've been looking at it for a couple of years and looked at options for tags. Basically, eventually we're wanting to get the, the herd to a kind of performance recorded herd. So we're keeping the best out the best cows and we're trying to wean out any of the breeding tiddlers and whatnot. So we've tried to do it on paper before, writing things down and we're the best one in the world things get lost, yeah. bits of paper disappear and whatnot. So now we're, we're kind of going into the electronic side of things. Yeah. So it's really just improving management, getting a bit of proper data rather than yes. aye, that diary with bits aye. written Well, that's and... it. I'm kind of at the age as well. I've got my farming years ahead of me rather than behind me. So mm -hmm. it's a kind of good time to, to start getting into that kind of stuff. Yeah. <coughs> but it's actually, when you see what people can do with it, it's really exciting to see the progress you can make aye. with a herd or a flock aye. by recording a bit of data. Yeah. What yeah. about the sheep end of things? Are you... Uh, using the ID for for sheep as well. Obviously, all the sheep are electronically tagged, but in the last couple of years, we've started the pure flocks. Um, we've got the Cheviots and the Suffolks. Um, they're tagged at birth. We're now going the same way with them, but a wee bit more in depth. You're in the Scott EID pilot at the moment. Mm -hmm. What? How's that process been? Or what, what's that involved? When I started looking at going down the EID route in general, this is what came up with the the ultra high frequency and we thought well there's no point in going with the, the low frequency if we end up having to change so we thought it's a good opportunity this is new we're new to it so it might be a good thing to start from now on there won't be a cow leaving the farm without a UHF tag in its, in its ear. Yeah. And through this farm advisory service program that we're running you're going to do a bit of vlogging and show us the, aye. the process and, and how you're getting into the system and what you're doing with yep. it. So I will, any time we're working at cattle, I will take wee videos and or whatever. We're weighing calves twice a month anyway, um, so they'll be, you know, we'll see daily live weight gains, we'll be reading the tags, we'll, so we'll keep everything up to date yeah. with what we're doing. Yeah, no, it'll be really interesting to see your journey. It'll be good. So when compulsory EID comes, what is the minimum requirement for a farmer to do? Breeders, not required. Farmers basics, get your electronic ear tag and put it in your ears. Register the births and deaths and get rid of the animals when you want to. That's it. For more information on electronic identification, visit the Farm Advisory Service website and the Scott EID website. If you've got any questions or want to know a bit more, feel free to contact Scott EID.